Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Burning Crowns, the Burning Wheel role-playing game. I'm your host and game master, Eric Volgaris. Uh, this is my <laughs> Sunday of my exciting role-playing extravaganza that my weekend has turned into, which is always fun and good. Um, I played two games yesterday. Super good. Um, finished Olympus Overdrive, the finale. I have to still render the VODs and stuff like that. I'll do that after Burning Crowns today. Um but that was an amazing experience. And then we play tested this other game, uh, which has a lot of promise, but we're, we're still working through it. So it's cool. Um, anyways, yeah, AP, what's new with you? Not much. Uh, attempting to survive, which gets harder every day. Uh, some people say that the longer you do something, the better you become at it. But it seems like the longer you stay alive, the worse you are at staying alive. <laughs> Are people right? Is life right? Who can say? Sam, how are you? I'm good. I, too, have played a, multiple games this weekend, which is fun. I got to channel my inner Ari Gold by playing an asshole record exec last night with Eric. Uh, so that was kind of fun. Um, but mostly I've just been thinking about burning crowns because that's what I always do when we're not playing this game <laughs> and coming up with Enigma enigmatic things for uh, Aurelius to say about God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Daniel? How are you doing, man? I'm doing quite fine. Thank you very much. I've uh, been having some fun playing some role-playing games too. Uh, returned to playing Masks on uh, with, with my, my buddies uh, yesterday. It was pretty fun getting back into that. I felt like I was getting a bit rusty, but we've had to uh, um, skip games a couple of times, so it was nice getting back in. Uh, also played some Blades in the Dark. What, what do you do when your tier zero crew of shadows decides they want to burgle a tier four Brightstone mansion? Because right now I'm just like going down the laundry list of things that will go horribly wrong. And I'm just oh, waiting yeah. for them to initiate that score. Teach um, them why they don't do that. <laughs> John, and I, John and I have had this discussion, actually. And it pretty much goes like... So you don't make it out your door when a bunch of blue coats show up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's basically how it is, is when you do that. Or it's the opposite. It's, oh, yeah, no, you totally get it. You But when you go grab the jewel and burglarize that thing, the doors slam shut and lock in, and you hear an alarm bells ring off, and you see lights coming outside. It was a setup. What do you do? Right? Exactly. So that's... that's yeah, so right cool. now I'm in, I'm in this point where I'm like, your tier zero, like all of you look like horrible washed up dregs. The the first point of conflict is probably gonna be getting into Brightstone at nighttime. It's gonna be like, yeah, the, the blue coats turn you around and kick you out because you don't belong. Like yeah, you're you here. Yeah, you're you here to create trouble. Yeah. yeah. You, you can't you you look like a beggar. Go away. <laughs> Go away. Yeah. What's your business here? Yeah, bullshit. And we're gonna check it when you come back too, right? Precisely. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's what I've been doing and looking forward to playing this game and being here yeah. with you wonderful nerds in chat. Oh, God, I want to talk about Blade so much right now. I'm really trying to resist, but I'm failing. <laughs> ah, I've been so excited because I've been talking so much about Blades and I just finished reading Lies of Lac Lamora and I was like, oh, oh so God. good. So good. It's really good. Tell me about that. The second it's... book takes a bit of a dip, but the third one is amazing as well. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm definitely I'm definitely going to read the rest of this the series. Um, the book takes place. It's actually, um, when I was reading it, the first thing I thought of was like, this is like Curse of the Crimson Throne books one to three. This is just, oh, this is hugely, oh, I know this is where the person who wrote those got this influence. Oh, this is it. This is the, this is the source material. And as well as also, um, like so much of Blades is there. Um, so anyways, uh, a big thing that I like, and you just brought it up, Daniel, is the idea of the district's being very, very unique and very, like, you know, if you're a little rapscallion from Six Towers, you don't get to go to Charter Hall because you have to cross these canals and everyone's always watching those canals. They know exactly what riffraff goes across there. Every, they'd have your name, your number. They don't know you. They're super suspicious. Like, everyone knows this stuff. You don't go anywhere in that city without people knowing who you are and where you go. Yeah, and, you know, there's there's always like someone the watching. Yeah. Sometimes the people watching don't give a fuck who you are, but there's always someone watching. That's why even even on those scores you, you run where you're just like, I did this perfectly. Basically, no one noticed. It's still like that little parentheses in the heat generator that's like, yeah, take note of the people who saw you, living or not. Right? Yes. It's always someone. 
Uh, it's super good. All right. So, anyways, enough about that. Um, are we excited and ready to get into some some burning burning wheels? Yeah, I thought we could just do some freestyle poetry jams, William Shatner style. Do some <laughs> I got spoken some word stuff. I got some time. Speaking of freestyle poetry jams, um, Vincent Baker just released the new game on his Patreon. It's called uh, In Dreaming Avalon, which is Firebrand's Arthurian legend style. That looks awesome. <laughs> that um, sounds cool. So there's procedural meal generation tables, which is exactly <laughs> what I want. And the second thing is there's a mini game called Jousting. And I'm going to be getting, I'm trying to get the Pendragon team together at some point to do it. Because uh, we like we would love to play this game, and there's this mini game called Jousting, and it's literally you know it's it's Jousting, but the way you do it is there's four separate mini games, and you choose one of them, and one of them is describing how you strike the other person with your lance and how they respond, and the first mm. person to laugh and break character loses. That's how you <laughs> determine who loses the joust. Oh God, but I would you, not so last you, you two must you demand yeah you demand of the other person how do you receive my lance. And I would lose back so and forth. quickly. I know <laughs> it's amazing. Just, I would just... win. Obviously, I literally won right there. Yeah, yeah well, AP, you're the <laughs> like, least puerile infant in this group. And, okay, and that gives you an unfair advantage in such a case. <laughs> and that's only one of the three other games. Another one is a rapping game about rhymes. Another one is a alphabet game about like finishing a sentence using all let the same letter of one thing. Like you have to fill in the blanks here with something that all starts with A, and like it's like oh, it's like oh, this is so fun, and and it feels whimsical and fey, like these types of games, like it feels very like uh, tonally correct. And yeah, it's super, it's super cool and right. fun. I would love to do um, that sometime. Anyway. I, I have a awesome. night rap for you right now that I just composed. Do it. The night rap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Sir Zydemir, and I'm here to say I'm gonna go ahead and die on another day. <laughs> Boom! Nailed it. <laughs> That's right. I'm done. Zombie I'm gonna here. spin some rhymes that will make you shiver while you throw my corpse down down the river. Oh, <laughs> I like that one. That's a good one. It's good. That's that's some good stuff there. Speaking <laughs> of uh, speaking of games and also on the note of, of Blades in the Dark, uh, I have started what is quite possibly the slowest possible playthrough, the slowest ever playthrough of Dishonored. It is literally just me. Like I'm, I'm not playing it officially. I'm just taking my time enjoying the game. I've only seen it being played, never played it. Savoring just, it. Yeah, I'm just walking through, looking at everything, like just staring at corners and weird textures and taking notes about furniture for my own Blades game. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this thing that has now taken me five hours to get to the first mission, where I'm just like going through territory and trying to like pep myself up in GM mode and try to describe what I'm seeing as though all my players were present. To be like, as you get off the boat, you walk through a dilapidated backyard as you approach the back door entrance of the Hound's Pit pub. Yellow brick stone work and like just go through like that's, that. Yeah, that's um that's some hardcore GM practice right there. Because I always trip on, like, I'm not, I'm self-conscious of my speech patterns when I GM, so I try to, like, do that for funsies, and I'm having a blast of it, just sitting on do my you, own being like... Do you GM in English? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, game time. Let's go review sure. our characters' beliefs for today, as always. Oh, that's not what that is. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and run through our beliefs. Sir Zydemir probably doesn't have any. Ha! Yeah, but he's going to be unconscious for a while. <laughs> All of his beliefs are just drowning noises. Each belief is my whole body feels like hurt. <laughs> ow, feels ow, like, ow, ow, ow. I got stabbed in the face. <laughs> yeah, seriously. In the neck. Yeah. All right. Um. Oh, wow, you, you gave your full name. Ronald Marquis, Land of the Golden Dragons, Count of Swan, His Grace, Chosen One of Abadar, Raiding Emperor who shall unite us all, Bearer of my Holy Mark, he who is the Scourge of Ravagog, uh, he who will defend the wall against the end of the world, Patron of the Arts and Industry, Sword of the Stolen Lands, Admiral of the Fifth Fleet, Commander of the Green Boat, Regular Militia, Mivon Auxiliary, Legion, Client of the Iron Claw Company, the Dragon Guard, and the uh, Pataxian Dragoons, who is underestimated at a fool's own risk. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. Have you been playing Morrowind? Is that a thing you've been doing? <laughs> oh, that's I wanted good. to have uh, 
whoever the emperor is in Witcher, I want to have a bunch of cool titles like him. The pale white fire dancing on the graves of his enemies. Yeah. Cool. I, I was thinking that. of just directly stealing that one, by the way, but I felt that was a little too on the nose. <laughs> Man, I, I haven't danced on any of my enemies' graves. Yeah, you yet, haven't done that yet. But, but only because I couldn't find where the raven was buried. <laughs> uh, we're doing beliefs? Yeah. All right. Yeah. My first belief. Expansion and acquisition is the heart of civilization. Once the building of the capital, Kerasuno, has begun, I must prove to my Mivanese allies that I am the leader they need abroad and at home. Nobility and rule follow the hearts of the people. Uh, I have drawn Constable General Fallon Nerwin to me. Now she must be convinced to join my crusade as part of a pantheon of good gods to rid the land of undead and secure Regarvia from enemies within and without. Surviving is not living, and creating a city is not a country. Something must unify my people, a rallying cry to march towards, and a culture of excellence to maintain after my death. Magic is more than just a single sorcerer, and knowledge more than a single advisor. Millions must attend me on the march and bring me any interesting things she comes upon. I am responsible to, to the, the people. people. Man, that third belief is getting so long because I gotta like get rid of the magic part of the belief to go back to the rallying cry <laughs> part of the belief. It's just it's getting recursive now. Uh, let's let's find out about you, Sam. Tell me about your beliefs. I will, because Sulius Aurelius believes things, and he doesn't have a long, obnoxious name. He's just a simple prophet. <laughs> um, all right. So first belief: only the strong wall shelters humanity from the storm. Skywatch has been useless in regards to finding the weapons of the faith, which I seek. As one of my most trusted disciples, I will task Cygnus first to cross with a holy quest to reclaim the ancient weapon that Abadar has revealed to me. Belief two. I will do everything in my power to bring Iravedi to our side, solidifying the union between Kurasuno and Pitax. Belief three. I will ensure that Mason knows that standing beside me against the end of the world means accepting Swan as leader. And finally, my zealot belief. As inheritor of the mandate of the holy emperors before him, Swan must unite these lands before the end comes. I will take it upon myself to treat with Mason as they have declared themselves queen of Brevoy. Instincts are to always have my doctoring supplies on me, always assume divine mandate, and always assume signs of the apocalypse. So super, super good as always. Daniel, what do you got for yeah. us? <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh... Yeah, so uh, I'm playing Mason, uh, aka Ceres Rogarvia, uh, and I have had to add a title of my own, Queen Bitch of Brevoy. Um, my first belief is, whether I want it or not, Brevoy is mine. I suppose its conquest may be excellent, an excellent proving ground for myself. More than half of Brevoy has declared for me. With the south unable to reinforce them, the northern lords are exposed. The vassalage of Ludovka and Sotova will come next. If our fates are predestined, nothing matters. I will claim fate from the gods and deliver it to mortals. I'll go to the Valley of Fire and acquire a weapon that even the gods fear, turning the table to my side. And as the last member of the Methesian Eye, I stand responsible where they no longer can. My instincts are also words that exist on paper. Uh, never give out knowledge without purpose. Always treat knowledge and relics with the utmost care. If there is understanding to be gained, do research. That's it. That's all she wrote. Cool. Okay. So then I think we are probably ready to begin. Yes. Okay. Um, let's, I want, I feel like we should probably start with AP. Uh, I feel like that's weird, if only because when I return to Karasuna, which I assume is the first thing that's happening, the first thing I'm going to do is ask Sam, how's that search for the Holy Relic going, which hasn't even started yet. 
That's true, but you oh. did only give him a month to prepare, which is That's totally fair. not enough yeah. for anything. Well, I mean, by the time he would be coming back, I would have sent them off and be, because I need to go to Pitax to talk to Iravetti and then join him. I thought Iravetti was finally coming here. I oh can't gosh. remember. <laughs> yeah. Whatever is happening. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, can, I can start or AG you're can start. You're supposed to go meet Irovetti. Remember, that was part of the um, request. Right. So I was going to go right after the trial, which it was when Swan was still in Mivan. Yeah. Um, but I would send Cygnus and his team out as like as I'm leaving. Be like, hey, here's yeah. your holy quest, my man. So we could do both, right? I feel okay. like we could do both then. Yeah, sure. Um, so I need a roll for um, Cygnus. Like, right, uh, okay. so like let's let's just say like this is what you know let's just like abstract their their quest yeah yeah so so just to give a little uh narrative here um yeah. what i'm doing is uh i'm summoning uh cygnus first to cross of the healed uh as well as um uh altair of the chained ones and um also uh uh li chen of the chained ones um, who is from the Far East. I don't know if Pathfinder has... It's on the I other assume side. They, yeah. I assume the, they the have The Far some East sort of, of Pathfinder is Russia. Uh, the far the east other of side of the is, world is yeah. TNCR. Well, yeah. that's where this person came okay. from, and somehow they ended up almost getting hanged before I saved them. So there's that. That culture um, exists on, on our continent as well. Like they, They've migrated before. So cool. Reasonable. Yeah. So um, Cygnus... Uh, so basically, I, I task them, uh, I give them the location of this holy artifact, uh, and I, I task them to choose um, uh, 20 uh, good soldiers from the, uh, the military order um, and uh, from the, uh, uh, the untouchables, because um, uh, Cygnus was a commander, uh, and uh, Altair knows the... Um, Knows everyone as well as does uh, Li Chen, and uh, I basically I give them the rundown and I task them with their their holy quest as some of my closest disciples. I need for them to do this, uh, and at the same time, I think the the rest of the healed and the chained ones are with me as well um, because I I want to make sure that they don't feel spurned. Um, El Deberon is being tasked. Uh, with the position of uh, Defender of the Prophet um, because the last Defender of the Prophet ha had a, a little knife to the throat accident. Um, and so, yeah, so I'll be taking the rest. I'll, I'll be probably taking a, a score of the Untouchables with me as a Honor Guard mm -hmm. uh, as well as the, the Chained Ones and the Healed. Um, yeah, so what kind of role would I be making here? So this would be actually for the the group, and I so I feel like we have to ab figure out what that um what their yeah, what their so ratings are, but yeah, so you're gonna run, so they're gonna have a a chance encounter, a small little skirmish with um the forces that are to the south. What are we um, checking for right now? Forces, and I don't know. I and basically, I need I need to know how that goes. I basically need like a blades engagement roll. Essentially, to be like, to just determine how this goes for them. I would um, suggest making a um, if if you don't have an idea yourself as the GM for what happens or anything interesting, uh, or you think they no, might I just know, succeed. I, I know what happens, right? Like I'm saying is that they end up skirmishing with the early peripheral forces of the thing that was awoken. I would call it a dire fate then, if you want to see how it turns out. So uh, I, I I'll, I'll make. Two suggestions. So one, I mean, I'm sending a bunch of armed soldiers, so they yeah. they should have some sort of skills there. Um, for my part of it, for like the challenge on Aurelius, I would suggest needing to make like some sort of maybe like suasion or oratory role um, to make sure that no one gets that a they don't decide to just grab this holy relic and run. And B, that nobody else in my group decides that I've spurned them and sort of go all, uh, um, 
you know, all like, oh, well, the, I guess the prophet doesn't like me then. Yeah, yeah like, like keeping everything politically okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. That would probably be an... How are you... And how are you doing that? Are you doing it by, like, making a speech to everybody? Or are you doing it privately by, like, the wheeling and dealings behind closed doors? Being like, no, listen, everything's cool. I like you too, kind of thing. Yeah, no, so this was how, specifically... How do, you, how do we see the prophet handle that? I, I think this was specifically after the trial. Um, and it's it's just with the chained ones and the the healed um, mm -hmm. because the uh, the flock is um, uh, the the chosen ones honor guard and and these are my disciples um, and I I think I sort of like speak and pontificate and then I sort of call uh, out um, Cygnus as well as uh, Lee Chen and Altair um, and and task them with this. Uh, and then while I'm doing this, I also name uh, El Deberon his his new position, defender and of the I prophet, sort right? of yeah, defender of the prophet. Um, and I also like I, I think like it sort of looks like a, a situation where it's like after he does these two pronouncements, he looks to the rest of the group and says, um, "My friends, do not think that I have forgotten you, for your loyalty." is paramount in my mind. It is the greatest tool in defense of civilization. I will need you with me on my journey to Pitax, for we must be able to convince Iravedi to join our coalition against the end. You shall have an important role to play in what is to come. Else, all will fall to ashes. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's orating, I think. Yeah, totally. Cool. Uh, so I will roll oratory. Um, what am I ob that I'm looking at here before I just start throwing dice? I think this is probably a four. So this puts me into a difficult position. I can either go for the difficult test or make everyone happy. And I think that this is too important because these are my closest advisors and most trusted confidants, and I would like them to remain on my side, at least for right now. Um, Seems reasonable. So I would like to fork in uh, Suasion for two dice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would like to fork in um, Abadar Wise because they are servants of Abadar. Mm -hmm. I'll buy that. And persuasion. Cool. Seems good. What does failure look like here? Uh, failure is that there's jealousy amongst the ranks, right? Yeah. Uh, that you do not see, right? Yeah. What will happen a... because You're... of that? Or will do we know that? Um. Yeah. No. It would. It would certainly lead to um dissension among your the ranks of them. Oh, infighting. Um, Somebody will sell me framing. for 17 silver pieces. <laughs> not so much you, but they will be competing for your favor in a way sure. that's not pr productive. Yeah, absolutely. Boom! I'll reroll those sixes as well. But it doesn't matter because you just rolled three sixes on nine dice, which is pretty good. Crushed. Yeah, so six. It's a good so, roll, yeah. my friend. Um, I, and as like, cause I exceeded a little bit, I think like while I'm making this speech, uh, we get the, the like faint glow of the, uh, uh, the chain around Aurelius's neck. And like, we can like feel the belief resonating off of, uh, his disciples. Yeah. And can you, um, can you do me a favor also? Uh, do you see how I wrote down like a Deberon defender of the prophet? Can you just list out your, um, your the, very the important people. I have names yeah, and, and how they're assigned. Can you just do that for yes. me real quick, so we can all see it on screen too. So when people ask, or they come up later to the chat, they will remember who's who. Yes. Right. And and I'll probably continue adding to this because I just I haven't I basically have been coming up with names for disciples as yeah. I like give them tasks. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we've got yeah I'll I'll do that. Um, if we want to jump sometime. over to someone, I don't know. Does, does no, because we actually get, we got before we, I departed. We got to stick with you because we're actually going to cut over to you and meeting with um, uh, Lady Oravetti, right? What? Where is this meeting taking place? You agreed to meet her. 
I so did. Um, part of me thinks that you are meeting them in Patax. Okay, we've never seen Patax before, have we? Yeah, which is actually pretty cool to see. But I feel like... Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um... The tra your journey through the Nara Marches um, was tenuous as tenebrous figures, uh, whether hallucinatory or real, stalked your paths, and it just feels like the whole woods was antagonizing and left you very restless on your journey. Certainly, um, your, your faith assured you protections and goodwill, but you couldn't help but feel like the natural order and something else is disturbed by your presence of you treading through it. Um, you you make your way, um, cresting over like after through the, through the swamps, through the woods, um, over over a couple woodland hills, and you finally see the the outskirts of Patax. Uh, Patax is a golden near. The best thing to describe it would be close to something like Venice. Um, it's interweaving rivers uh, crisscross it. You can see the the, the various uh, small canals um, that are that are jutted around it. Large white and gold stone um, walls uh, carried around. Uh, red banners on the sky. It looks very clean. Very well. If it wasn't, bec it's it's a little bit short in terms of our uh, like in terms of height of a city. Like there's not a lot of tall buildings in it, but. Um, Ronald Swan would be very pleased with it. I have a, I have a, suggest, a suggestion for like a subtlety about the city. Mm -hmm. That uh, the canals, though like the city looks pretty and like aesthetically is, is pleasing and whitewashed. Um, no one is swimming in the canals or fishing in them because the oh, rivers yeah. are hella poisonous from like spillage yeah. from the foundries. Yeah, also, exactly. Like, yeah, oh, that's a good Venice. point. Venice, There's a lot of... You don't yeah. swim in those canals. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a really good point. I didn't. I, I should have neglected to mention there are rows of smokestacks um, coming up uh, on on one side of the city. Um, you know, there's. It is a very industrious town. And uh, as as we like crest the hill, um, Aurelius like says it as though he's saying it to himself, but he's like letting his voice carry in in the way that he tends to do. Um, and uh, he says, um, truly blessed is the site of civilization for those emerging from the wilderness. Um, I feel like maybe it's Adoberon, maybe it's someone else, but just kind of remarks. Uh, as you guys make your way down uh, to the city, you realize that you're crossing just swaths of clear-cut forest. That they have just taken the trees and have just left left nothing right it's just it's not brown earth it's just you know just clean fields of just wild grass and seeds that were once you know you see occasional stumps right and like yeah. various weeds growing out of them it is they've just clear cut acres and acres and acres of the woods over here yeah there and, was and no I, wizard who knew better yeah as as we're like approaching um uh aurelius is doing his like usual thing of like sort of uh, talking and, and speaking with the, the faithful, especially the uh, untouchables that are the honor guard. Um, yeah. And he's like, he's, you know, saying things like, yeah, you know, it, it, it must be good to be home. I shall surely need your support when speaking with the Lady Iravetti. Yeah. She's a strong woman, but I believe we can bring her to our side. Yeah. The closer you get to the city, the more impressive the fortifications reveal themselves to be. Um, they seem to be almost obfuscated from the uh, various glitters of golds and, and roof shielding. There are like cannons facing outside of it, and other almost you know mind-boggling siege equipment that you have just never seen. It's very, very shocking to. You. Uh, I feel like it just looks almost quasi alien, but maybe maybe to, to a priest of Abadar, you're like, no, this is this is some this is some cool stuff, right? Uh, this is this is it. this is the good stuff. Oh, about it. Yeah. So um, there's there's certainly mixed reactions. Of course, your your defenders. I mean, some of the ones. Uh, what do you call the ones with the golden the the, the original bandits? 
so the original bandits are the flock. They're and all with. They're AP. not with you. Yeah, they're, they're with AP. They're, yeah. All right, that's right. So you're just you're coming back with the um the, the defenders from the Untouchables. So they are very at ease. Yeah, like and they, and also I th so we've got the the healed the chained ones who would have never seen Pitax, and then we've also yeah. got about twenty of the actual Untouchable soldiers with yeah. us as like defense. Right. But yeah. Right, and they're so like they're like by by the first vault. Is this? Sir, this is a place blessed by Abadar. It's like immediately other things come out of their mouth when they when they see this, right? Oh yeah, their their capital is built mostly of wood. Yeah, right. Surely Irovedi is one who holds Abadar in her heart, even if she does not realize it in her mind. I remember when my brother was unto this, before his eyes were opened to the light of God. Yeah. Uh, so you make it. Uh, you you approach the gates, and they're expecting you, right? And so, um, it's no no interference. They're wearing the armor of 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 the Pataxian guards. I think you. I think we've seen it already, but in case we haven't, um, it's very like um, I picture something like conquistadorian, like that folded sided hat that's metal. You know what I'm talking about? Mm, uh, yeah. With like a lot of plumage, um, a lot of pikes and and like pike rifles kind of stuff that they, they carry with them, like an arquebus and a pike. I uh, I personally thank um, whichever guard like or guards wall. like let us in. Yeah, I like yeah. personally personally thank them for their service and their defense of the wall uh, before going inside. Yeah. You can see that they uh, they thank you. Several of them have quite a few scars, but they're no strangers to to, to battles absolutely uh and does it does anyone like come to greet me or am i just do i just like walk through the, is it like pretty obvious yeah. where i need to go yeah so like i don't know what it's called but there's sort of like the main road right the main broadway thoroughfare um and it leads you to sort of the um the center uh center circle of, of the city right it's the plaza um the plaza it's probably like that's actually you know what it's called the plaza de de uh de la Irivetti, right um, because in 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 the middle of this of the of the plaza of this beautiful white uh, cobblestone um, square, even though it's a circle, uh, is a huge statue um, of 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 bronze of of Lady Rivetti. And I feel like um, she has she's willing to meet with you in in this in this square, awesome. letting everyone kind of see um, and see your glorious reception. Um, you see that there are several. You see that they have. Uh, the lady has kind of uh, taken great strides to impress you. Uh, to not necessarily. It's not. This isn't like an intimidation thing. But this is like, hey, uh, you can see that. It, you can see just from your your uh, you know your latent Sertoven eye. The motivations here are, are very plain and clear. She's putting on a very good performance and. Uh, perception for her people about how she accepts powerful people. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. Right. She knows what she's doing, and I, I ambitioned wise her way back. So exactly. I, I totally. I'm, that's got, why I'm. That's why her. I'm spilling this to you this way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm yeah. Right and there. so like, there's a red carpet lined out when you get to the circle, and it's it's beautiful. Um, and of course, and they're they're willing to take you and have court outside in this beautiful. Um, like pretty warm. Remember, it's it, there's a, this winter has been un, unusually warm. Mm -hmm. um, so oh, yeah, so it's kind of like humid. Yeah. yeah. So they, um, yeah. I'm uh, I'm wearing, I'm probably still wearing travel clothes, uh, but like as always, he's wearing robes. Um, he's got like the big sleeves so that he can like hold, put his his hands in the sleeves, you know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so he, he like walks up, his chain swinging and, and glowing in the light. Um, uh, do I see Irovetti? Yes, um, she's she's currently uh, eagerly waiting um, for you guys. Uh, yeah, I, I approach she's and I surrounded by assistants. Um, there's I a, give her a, a pavilion ahead. set up over her, right? Yeah, so as I as I enter, like come under the pavilion uh, and into the shade, mm -hmm. the like glow of the chain becomes a lot more obvious, um, and I I give her like a, a deep nod, 
Uh, and I say, uh, Lady Iravetti, it is my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me into your city. Oh, please. The pleasure remains strictly in Pataxia's hands, Prophet. Nods and says, yeah. uh, without your troops, I do not think I would have survived my journey into the Narl Marshes. They are well trained and great and honorable men. Yes, whether be it your gods or Pataxian might, but the things that they dwell in the forest do not interfere. Yeah, does she, does she notice, by the way, like, does she recognize her uh, troops well enough to notice that the healed, like, that she recognizes the healed, but for some reason they're no longer lepers? Ooh. No, because they still wear this, like, it's required wearing of, like, things, so probably not. But uh, they're, they're, like, bandages are almost, like, uniform. Yeah. Instead of being just, like, uh, strictly medicinal, it's, like, a thing they wear ceremonially. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. It's part of, like, these black bandages is, like, part of their uniform, so I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will say, uh, your absence from Swan's war party has been greatly missed. However, your commander Rolf has done an excellent job. I would like to discuss further cooperation between our two nations, burgeoning though ours might be. Hmm. Does, does she know that Swan has given you that authority in the letter to, to negotiate? Do you have that power? I don't think I did put it in the letter. I think I'm telling her right now. Okay. Well, then... She will hesitate... She... You know that she's hesitate when she says this, but she's warmly receives that offer. It's like, oh, you are so gracious. Um, I'm so glad to uh, to be able to, to talk and, and create such strong bonds between our lovely cities. Surely... I, Surely, um, and I, I should, she's like, forgive me, but Count Swan is probably far too busy with his, with his capital. Uh, just how, you know, how ruling cities can be sometimes. It takes us away from the things we want to do. And I hopefully have not offended him too, too graciously with uh, my, my absence. The brother of the prophet prepares for war. You must have heard by now. Brevoy... Brevoy is on the crux of a great civil war. I believe you know the person who has declared themselves queen. They used to spend time in our company. Have you heard? The sorceress? She says. She just nods and says. Mason, the... They're a formidable... Huh. Like she, said, like she says that and then trails off and she goes, Huh. Like, yes. she's redoing the calculus, right? In her Alliances head. are being formed between formable, formidable opponents. As such, my brother thought it poignant to create alliances of his own. He has sought to treat with Mivan, and we would like to create more than a simple contract between Kurasuno and Pitax. He plans to head and take his forces to treat with Mason. I would have you join us. Hmm. Well, you have my... I forget what... Uh, the untouchables, I think that's what I called them, right? Her, you have, you have my untouchables. What... Uh, can you be more clear about what, what you actually wish? Currently, basically, she's denying. And she's basically saying, "I already gave you troops. What? Why yeah, yeah. would you? What's your problem?" Right. We currently in, in, in have the a polite language. Yeah, we, we currently have a contract with your people. Dark things are on the rise, Iravetti. A storm rises on the horizon. Salvation for all men may come only one way: unity. I do not want a contract, though contracts are blessed in the eyes of Abadar. A union 
true alliance is worth far more. Now, I don't want to pretend that... I don't want to give the wrong impression, especially to the speaker of the one who knows so much about contracts. Um, alluding to your religio religiosity, right, of laws and stuff. But... The contracts uh, went two ways. The city of Pitax was also promised aid. Defeat the defend defeat the creatures and the dangers of the Narrow Marches, which remains to have been done. So we're a little hesitant to devote so much resources to something that's so far away from us when we have so many dangers so close to us. The danger is here. The danger is now. Standing alone, each city, each nation, each country will fall. Only united can we form the wall that will stop the storm. I have opened the eyes of your soldiers. Ask them yourselves. Look upon the ones that I have healed. They have been bathed in the light of Abadar. I seek to save all of us. Okay. And so now you're going to persuade them to get them troops. I don't feel like this is a duel of wits, right? Uh, it's, it's your call. I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for like like true national national uh, coalition here. No, nah, right? you're oh. you got your beliefs here. So let's duel of wits it. Sure. Yeah, duel of wits it, my friend. Works for me. Yeah, your beliefs on the line. This is important enough. We're meeting, so we bring. You this the is right also one. the kind of thing where no, it wouldn't be an all or nothing situation. Generally speaking, there would be compromise somewhere in this. I'm sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So, um, this is a big deal. Yes. Um. So I will use my oratory skill. Um. So my. Is this a big deal or not? It's I didn't definitely hear a big deal for Aurelius. Okay. Um, it's a big deal for Irovedi as well. Uh, I'll cool. take the right-hand side and you take the left. Alrighty. Alright, um, so... What's what's our... If what, is, what does victory look like for each side? Yeah, what are your terms? Um, so, if I win, um, I want uh, Irovedi to join our coalition. Uh, I want uh, Pitax... Uh, essentially to to join us um, both in preparation for uh, the potential to um, protect ourselves from Brevoy, uh, but more importantly, um, I want basically a, a similar similar to what 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 I created with the union I created with the Goramites. Um, yeah, I want a great co-prosperity sphere, as AP puts it. <laughs> Um, I want uh, I want Irovedi to realize that there's a huge amount of value in um, the the uh, nation states of the South uh, to join together, especially with the current events with Brevoy, as well as uh, the rising of the dead and the um, coming apocalypse. So, uh, if I may ask, um, it sounds like you want something, or at least a lot of something that is already yours. Um, or am I misunderstanding? Isn't she already helping us against the coming storm? Isn't yeah. she already agreeing she, to that? It, we but, pay but for a contract enough. for mercenaries. I don't okay. want a contract with mercenaries. I want a union between two states. Okay. She kind of wants that too, which is interesting. Oh, However, what I'm writing for my body of argument is that they want recognition of Pitax as actually the greatest city of the River Kingdoms. They want you to bless this place and name her honorary chosen of Abadar. They want that if this is to work this way, they will be. That is just the most beautiful thing ever. All right. Well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll Which be is weird to say to... because I haven't really like telegraphed that when we were talking, but that's what this duel of wits is going to get into. Yeah. So, so let me, let me basically reframe the way I'm thinking of this as well. Um, so if that's on the table, what I would think is basically both of us want some sort of unity. Pit, uh, Irovedi wants Pitax to be first among equals. 
Silius Aurelius wants uh, Kirasuno to be the first among equals. Basically, right? this is yeah. the scene from Pirates of the Caribbean where you're, you're Jack Sparrow. You're like, so we've established my proposition is okay. In principle, we're just haggling over cost. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so the way I will phrase this is um, uh, formation of the great of the great co-prosperity sphere. Just one is more prosperous than the other is kind of what we're debating, right? Yeah. Uh, so it, uh, creation of the great co-prosperity sphere with Swan and Kurosuno at its head. Totally. Uh, all right. How do I, oh, I gotta break the line myself. Uh, and yeah, so body of argument for big deal, do of wits is, uh, I believe, will plus skill, correct? Um, what? Come again? Uh, it's will, my will plus, um, yeah, my it's not plus your skill. skill. Your skill exponent, yes. Yep. You don't so roll I have, for a big deal. I start with 10. Um, and as like, as this like discussion and we're like truly getting into it begins, um, Aurelius holds up a hand and he says, uh, mm -hmm. pardon my impertinence, my lady Iravetti. But before we speak, before we come to terms of our agreement, let us pray. Let us bless this union in the eyes of Abadar. And uh, he like puts his head down and I'm assuming that like the rest of my believers, uh, I like lead them in prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, I ask for Abadar to bless this union uh, to bless our ability to come to a fruitful and honest agreement, an agreement that can help to save the world. Um, may, may I comment on your terms, Sam? I don't want to uh, rain on your parade, but I have a question. Yeah. So, um, what what is it? Uh, so, in terms of what it is you want out of this uh, duel of wits, um, what what is it that she's agreeing to if you win uncontestedly? Because it seemed to me like you wanted to create a coalition, which implies, you know, temporary cooperation. But is is this supposed to say that the temporary cooperation is her temporarily working for Swan until she doesn't want to? Or is it? are you actually trying to set up an, a, a real partnership? I'm trying to set up a... Uh, definitely a real partnership, but the the very clear implication in the same way that she wants a partnership with Pitax as the leading member. Oh no, want... she she doesn't want um she doesn't want uh you to she doesn't want Pitax to be the leader of the coalition. She wants you to say Pitax is the greatest of the River City King. Like she wants your endorsement. My city is awesome. Uh Pitax number one. And she wants your blessing and to be yeah. named an honorary prop, right? She doesn't want that. So am I mistaken that she doesn't want uh, a, a partnership with the, the with uh, uh, Kirasuno? No, they do. It's just that it's more on the side of Patax and you're partnering with Patax and yeah, not I want the, other the exact around. opposite. I want I her know. to partner with our already blessed holy city that I've already blessed yeah. and named a chosen one. I know. And now that you've seen this place, she's like, how could you ever yeah. not want no, to bless this place? I'm so. with that. Uh, just the to river be clear, is on the, fire. The terms every are different than the body of argument. I cut yeah, it down yeah, yeah. for the body of argument because it's pithier. Hey, um, um, Daniel, what's the name of the trait that um, makes it so when you get knocked to zero, you come back to one? Tenacious. Tenacious. The tenacious. Okay, I was like, it's not driven. I because yeah, she totally has that. Um, okay. Um, cool. Uh, so she has five dice in oratory as well. Damn, that's yeah. a lot of dice. Uh, all right. So she, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm saying this prayer, uh, and I want to make a faith roll here. Um, I would like to. Um, give myself a, uh, I would like to use aid on my oratory skill to give myself bonus dice. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what, what does that, so I'm, I'm curious here, what does that prayer sound like? 
Because are you, are you'd be like, I already oh, said the prayer. Blessed Avatar, give me a leg up in this conversation. Yeah, no, I already you... said the prayer. I said it, it's uh, allow us to come to a fair and honest agreement, an agreement that is best for uh, creating a coalition that will save the world. And what I believe is that... How does that, is that not bless both people? Here is why. Because my entire set of beliefs are about how Swan needs to be the leader. I have two beliefs to oh, specifically okay. say that. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we need do. everyone to unite. Sold. There needs to be plenty of good generals, advisors, and commissioners, but there needs to be one tip of the spear. I would buy that for a dollar. Um, and here's the question. Uh, ha, I have um, about 32 believers here with me. Do they, and I made rolls to make sure that they were specifically believers, so I would like to cash in those extra dice here. Um, I know that the untouchables have an average will of five based on the roll that I made to convince them. Um, and so that it's for every four will dice, I get one, uh, faith die. That's about it though. As far as believers go, uh, Patax is rather agnostic. Oh yeah. 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 I just met my, my people, but yeah. so 30 of my people with an average will of five is a lot of dice. <laughs> uh, let me see. The Av or not not average... agnostic, but... Um, okay, so... Polytheistic, 20... I guess. I don't know what the word is. Is it, they, they don't revere one god very yeah, specifically. Yeah, like the rest of the realm. Yeah. yeah. So I get one, plus one die for every 20 accumulated will dice. Um, I have approximately 30 believers with five will each. Um, so that's 150. I'm only going to, I'll, I'll take like, I'm going to only take, uh, five of the dice that they would give me. Cause otherwise it's way overboard. I think. Does your followers have five will? Because that is crazy. Yeah. I specifically made a rule against the untouchables where the average will of the crowd was five. Yeah. So unless that has changed between here and there, that would Do be the were the average okay yeah oh, that's okay i mean i made a roll an oratory roll against an average will of five yeah. i'm i'm questioning whether that was the um if eric says yes then that's the case i'm just uh double checking because no, that, these are these lot. are like elite jaded forces that you convinced so yeah totally cool um so i start with six i get five bonus dice i would like to use my staff to give myself another die um and i'm rolling against ob four for aid uh, if I meet the four, I get plus one. Every die above that that I succeed, I get another plus one for one oratory roll. You got this. Crush it. Uh, four. How can somebody convince? Crushed. How can someone convince you to not bless something in a way that'd be? You're right. Like you really can't. I. That's. I mean, I have I beliefs about like I know. I, I know. A, I'm zealous. Devout. I know. I'm just. I know. Yeah. I just feel like I'm a fanatic. The way the way you yeah. would do that, it would be to like you know like keep your god out of the conversation. I don't want you to slant the like to to uh, bring your god into this. This is a, a conversation between men, right? Like that's yeah. the angle there. Uh, so I'm gonna re-roll one of those failures with a fate. Um. I have so many faith in this skill right or in my faith right now. All right. Oh, nice. So I have 13 successes, uh, which means I, on one oratory roll, I'm going to get an extra nine dice. <laughs> All right. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to write that down somewhere. Cool. I, uh, we can start scripting now, I think, unless you've got something. No, I'm good with that. I can start scripting. Uh, it is up to a maximum of plus three dice. So. Ah! Oh, I missed that. That but makes that's, way more sense. That's really that's good. That's still huge. Yeah. yeah, plus three dice is hella big. It's the same you could gain from putting Persona into it. Correct. Are you a player or a GM in the level... Sam. I, I have GM permissions. Okay, cool. So you can play that stuff down. Okay. And then resize it. We believe in the power of Avatar. Praise Keezus, everybody. Praise Keezus. Um... Ah. 
All right, I'm ready when you are. Uh, I'm not ready yet. No worries. You can just ask questions because Sam has already put down his cards. If you're wondering about something. Okay, I got it. Uh, I just wanted to make. I, I wanted to just read the rules of one of the cards I wanted to grab before I. I just just to make sure it's the one I wanted to grab. Yes. And I'm I'm good. All right. All right. Uh, let's, let's flip it. Let's flip them. Do we want to? So something that is, I do in mouse guard is I, I I reveal all the cards. Yeah, that works for me. And then, you you should probably reveal on on case by case basis, but it's fine. I, I don't know. Fine. I feel like I feel like we can use some dramatic irony of how it, this the thing's going to go to help influence our, our role playing. Perhaps, but the 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 counterpoint to that is that knowing ahead of time what's coming is um, remember you can elect to change a card by not by by skipping your third action, and if you know what's coming, that uh... allows you to set up some real bullshit. That's a good point. Well, we're not smart enough to do that yet, so you're right. So I will avoid this in the future. But okay. So yeah, so uh, Obfuscate versus Rebuttal. Um, so that's Obfuscate is a versus test against everything. It's my ability to just take away that uh, entire action. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like an insight. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, so here's, here's what my Obfuscate sounds like. Um. Hold on, do you fire? So, does rebuttal? Does obfuscate beat rebuttal in terms of actions priority? Um, yes, because it takes I thought away they're the, the same entire level. action. But okay, I th I think uh, so. Rebuttal is always spoken with regards to something else, right? Like you don't start a rebuttal out like just from no nothing. You wait yeah. to hear what people have to say and then you rebut. Yeah. Okay. So. Sounds good to me. All right. Um. So. Uh. I will go first. Um, so Aurelius looks deeply into Irovetti's eyes, and he's speaking loud enough so that everyone uh, around can hear. Um, but it's very clear that this is a message directed directly towards Irovetti. Uh, and he says, um, In my travels across the, the great country, I passed a curious pile of stones of a type I found Remarkable. Precarious though they looked, they were actually quite solid, formed from one spirit strata, now exposed to open air. I wondered how it was possible that they remained in such a neat stack with the fury of the rains blowing against them. Soon I ascertained their nature. I found that force from one direction pushed them back against one another and the rock behind. No amount of pressure I could produce in that manner caused them to shift. And yet, when I removed one stone from the bottom, pulling it out instead of pushing it in, the entire formation collapsed. Doing things the old way, following old traditions, is not the way to salvation. The straightest path does not always lead us to civilization. Uh, yeah, and I was hoping to use suasion for that obfuscate for quoting a religious text of Jezrean the prophet. Yeah, that is the, the just the most beautiful obfuscate ever. Like the most like non-contributing bullshit. It's just so good. Shout out for Brandon Sanderson because yeah. I ripped that straight from him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you uh, did. But it's perfect. It's perfect thing for uh, Aurelius. The thing to is, say. in the in the context where that was told, that wasn't an obfuscation. He was making a point. Correct. You managed to turn it into something monstrous. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah. So then you can rebut and then divide your dice pool up. Okay. Yeah. I'm just thinking about how I want to do this. And, what are um, you even saying? This is a bullshit. Let's get to talking about agreements, right? Um, no, I think I think the first thing she would say is uh, it's actually nothing, but she gestures around and says, uh, "Look around you, our dear prophet. What around here looks conventional and traditional? Patax is nothing but observant and." Cutting edge. Yeah. Uh, innovative and mold breaking, as the word she says. 
we understand far, far better than are these dilapidated neighbors to the north. And it's one of the reasons why I am so fond of our mutual friend, Marquis Swan, is that they too like to break the mold. But I often... What is it that you see in that man that you not see around you here? That this is... That what could he achieve that I have not already? I, he is building a new city, and I will protect that because I cherish the, the the will of someone who can create such a light in the darkness like this. From taking it, wrest it from these wild, unclaimed lands, I admire that fiercely. But I have already started doing that. I have so much more successful here, and I am so much far ahead by rejecting traditions that it is. It is truly this is this is the rock this is the sun that all other of these or uh, planets uh, bodies shall orbit. You know she gets into yeah. badass. Um, she knows how to speak to a prophet. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. So just a strategy In fact, thing for she, you here. Yeah. Eric? She might she might even like I she would also would have said stuff being like like look at these cannons hand forged by like the greatest minds of our generation. You like. After this, I will take you on a tour, and you will see that these cannons, each of these could have been plucked from Abadar's very own vault. You know? Like, like she goes on and labels different things. Look at the artwork of, of you know, these places, and this is this is culture. Patax is culture. Look innovation. at my bling. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Cool. Um, so just to give you a, an idea, Eric, because yeah, uh, strategy stuff... Basically, the way I read this is, since it's a versus test, your rebuttal pool, your defense pool, is going to be the versus test against my obfuscate. And your attack pool will be, if I fail, you can then hit me with the, that attack pool. So basically, yeah. the, the, the strategy question is, you want to win the defense side by as little dice as you possibly can, so that then you can hit me as hard as I can if I fail. Yeah. And what's your pool look like? Uh, let's create that right now. Um, so I'm rolling, uh, suasion. Mm -hmm. to, so in order for Irovedi to fully defend against his obfuscate action, she has to roll more defensive successes than, uh, Aurelius rolls, uh, obfuscate successes. Correct. Um, so I start... It's not enough to match him. She must go over. So I start with my so. B7, or, yeah, so I start with my B7 open-ended suasion. Uh, I would like to fork oratory. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't uh, it? Isn't this actually oratory? Uh, that was why I specifically said that I was directing the statement to her and not to the crowd. Okay. Uh, the reason why I think oratory is a fork here is because I know how to speak to an individual while having my voice at a level where it carries to the rest of the crowd. Okay. Um, so yeah, forking oratory, uh, forking persuasion. Um, I would like to fork in um, uh, doctrine for quoting scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to fork in uh, ambition wise because I understand very deeply the opponent I'm speaking against uh, based on a former ambition wise test. Mm -hmm. Uh and then I would like to push for Abadar wise here because she is specifically asking to be named chosen of Abadar. Uh, I'm arguing against somebody who's asking for a blessing from Abadar and to be named a uh, representative of the God. Well, I would just, I'm going to not allow that for this reason, because that was not part of what I said. Okay. That's part That's of my overall body of argument. However, that was not part of my rebuttal. Mm. Yeah, that did I mean, not come I, into I, play. I see that. I'm not sure I agree, but I'll I'll go with that. That's totally fine. I mean, how um, would you? How would you? How, what does AP and Daniel say about that? Do you so like that's my perspective of that because like while my body of argument is definitely arguing for that and it would be relevant and I think in a future point because my rebuttal is trying to get you to just recognize right now the the beauty of Pitax, 
I, I, I didn't really bring that up, and so I'm not sure you can fork that. So, uh, what I would say is that um, always be mindful as a GM, be mindful of the task and whether it fits the intent of what's going on. Yeah. Uh, the intent here is to obfuscate uh, on Sam's behalf, is to be like, you're, that thing you're saying, never mind all that thing you're saying, let's think of this other thing that is completely unrelated. Whereas yeah. what she's doing is to driving at the point. So you only have skills that are relevant, and it's also with what is applicable to the person I'm talking to. Um, you you have to constantly be mindful of task intent situation when you GM. I have okay. I can't I can't be more precise than this. I have to give you yeah. loose bullshit then I would I'll because let you, I'm not I'll sure. Let you do it. Yeah, I'll All let right. you do it then. Uh, Excellent. You, that's enough to convince me that it should. Um, and I don't think I'm using etiquette, so that'll be it. So I'm going to be rolling thirteen open ended dice. Okay. So I am doing oratory, persuasion, uh, stentorious debate. Mm. Uh, That's a attacks. dwarven skill. Mm, no. It's yeah. dwarven at character creation. I don't know if it's uh, continually it, that. You have to have the dwarven natural magic to have stentorious debate. It's probably the case. Let's see. Oh, it's, it's dwarf only. Never mind. Okay. I thought it was just, I didn't read that part. I just thought it was just good skill by this person. It's a really good skill. It's a yeah, really good skill. Seems, yeah, it's dwarves only, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, um, so uh, just to, to give you this, uh, Eric, because um, you asked the question of like, I just mentioned this uh, task intent thing. Um, you have re represented Irovetti as being kind of like on the fence about the dwarf, uh, not about the dwarf, about the gods. Is that the case? Is she like, not as devout as you would think. Yeah. You might factor that into the uh, to the obstacle of a test in that case. Again, that's a uh, that comes back to does the task fit the intent? Who am I talking to? Yeah. These are things you're allowed to consider in the game. Uh, I would disagree with that simply because she's specifically asking me to bless her as a representative of the god. Well, so that's just you manipulation. Can't... You can't claim to be, you can't, if your entire argument is form made, form, formed around the idea of getting divine blessing, you can't then claim it's hard for you to convince me because oh, yo, I'm I, X, Y, and Z. So here's the thing, that the reason she can do that is because you're using suasion. Because your argument is not formed from reason, your argument is formed from an appeal to her mortal soul. Religious infallibility. Also, yeah. also what, you're, what you're pointing out here is like, I mean, I guess you could give an advantage die for that, maybe. But in a duel of wits, I'm not just rolling against yeah. an obstacle. Yes. No, no. But that's I'm 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 not saying this to modify this situation. I'm saying it because it seemed relevant to what's going on, and it's basically to the question Eric just posed, right? So I'm just saying it to bring light to that thing. Um, Six, seven. That when you're when you're preaching the sanctity of your soul to a non-believer you are using a, a task that is less suited for the, the intent, right? Like, that's what I'm saying. Um, ooh. Yep, okay. Uh, so, um, once again, so it's oratory, persuasion, uh, rhetoric, etiquette, and patax-wise. How did etiquette factor? I mean, I, I'll give it to you. That that does all seem reasonable. Um, how are you dividing the pool? Um, I probably should drop something like ten one, <laughs> or yeah, uh, yeah probably probably division? just ten and one. So ten defense. All right. Um, so I will roll my suasion first. Oh shoot, I did that totally wrong. <laughs> Let me reroll that. I rolled four dice instead of thirteen. <laughs> uh, yeah, just reroll all of them. Yeah. Although in fairness, that is one hell of a roll. Yeah, but I have a lot of more dice than that. <laughs> uh okay. Six five fires. Are at the zero, base on one. Alrighty. And I will. I don't need to reroll one of my successes. Uh, I think she's, she's, gonna, she's gonna spend. I think she's gonna spend her fate to reroll the sixes. 
nothing. Nope. All right. Okay. So yeah, I take away her uh, her move, and she suffers a plus one ob to her next action. I gain a plus one d to my next action. So right. she doesn't get to make her point. Uh, no, she doesn't get to make her rebuttal. Oh, her, she her loses attack. her attack factor. Got it. Okay. Basically, if that had just been a point and I had failed, all six of those successes would yeah, have done would have damage been to game. my body of argument. Got it. Right. Okay, so then we move on to the next of point. Correct. Yep. Does... And she's going to take a plus one ob. Okay. I was going to say, so then that the other, the it... latter part of the next action comes into effect here and not part of the uh, second part of the rebuttal. Okay, so it's just it's just the obfuscate versus rebuttal is tricky. And yeah. obfuscate yeah. in general is, okay. okay. In, mm -hmm. in this, in this yeah. case, what this means is just that the damage she inflicts on this point is going to be lowered by one. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Uh, who is older? Um... Aurelius is 28 years of age. How Lady Rivetti is, is, is older. Yeah, okay, so then she gets to go first. Okay. I will make my point very clear, dearest honored guest. We welcome into your home, and you see that I cannot receive you at the Temple of Abadar, for Patax does not have one. Let's change that together. For this city, for all its culture, we have may have neglected our divinely duties, and what better way to correct it than it's with a prophet here, willing to run and direct the church. The new church, the church directly controlled and ran by the prophet themselves. From this fairest city, full of wonders that truly Abadar has blessed it's clear as day these cannonades these metal this steel that can these bullets that can cut the darkness this place is blessed already it is consecrated ground build your church here build it on this rock okay um so my point is um lady Iravedi, your welcome into your city has been a boon to me but I have opened the eyes of your servants. I have shown them the path to salvation. My, my brother shall need great generals, great advisors, strong men and women to help in the fight now and the fight against the darkness that is to come, the darkness that rises already. The dead rise from the ground, the monsters, come up in the woods. Now is the time to embrace the light for as the monk once said, uh, what was the name I had? I had a name for, uh, that the monk sister Arlene Gracio once said, give light and darkness will disappear. We must bring light into the world, but there can only be one true leader. There can only be one tip of a spear. That person must be my brother. Your value is irrefutable, but he is the chosen one. I wish I had rebuttal. Um, cool. Uh, do you want to roll first with her feel, stuff? We, we just cut to the crowd or an advisor being like, clearly this prophet has never heard of a trident. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I know, but I, I yeah. Anyway. Oh, so so you like that that advisor could throw helping dice in if he's throwing out burns from the sidelines. That could mm. be what that is. I mean, that is a really good burn. I feel I like mean, that would. Gonna... I feel like that has to. I feel like I feel it's too good of a burn to not. But like, what do you? It's not. I mean, I don't know. I, don't know. Really I feel like if if I can start calling in help from the group that I have, yeah. then this is going to start getting really messy. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it really should have been set out ahead of time if help so let's, are Yeah, no, so it's not. It's just us. Okay, so that's just that's just an aside. All right. It's all right. Oratory. That's a, that a dank observation, Eric. Oratory. Really was. Two from persuasion. <sighs> Attacks, Just seven persuasion? Etiquette. What the hell? Yeah. Oh my god. Um, 
In fact, I should be leading with persuasion instead of that, but it's the same amount of dice. She's anyways. speaking to the crowd, though. Yeah. Um. I like that this theme that's going on in the background has like regular interludes of cannon shot. Yeah. Is she lying to me? She's playing herself off as a believer. I'm not forking falsehood. So Okay. That that was that's I'm curious. Yeah. Uh let me know when you're good and I'll start asking for forks. Um just finishing up the math. I wanna see if there's any What are some typical die traits people have that I should be forgetting about? Oh, driven! I forgot driven. People That's don't a call have. On. People yeah. don't oh. have typical die traits. That's right. Die traits. Die traits are atypical. Driven is a very specific call on that would have to relate to one of her beliefs. So I would hesitate to give her that unless you specifically know what her beliefs are. I know what her beliefs are. And so the driven trait is specifically referring to her oratory in regards yeah. to that belief. Yeah, she it's seems more of a conqueror on. to me. Well. Yeah, it only refers to will. one skill. It only refers to one yeah. skill. So, all right, that's fine. I'm just making sure. That's how she became ruler of Patax. Sure, sure, sure. This lady is an ex-adventurer. Mark my words. Okay. Uh, ready for me? Yeah, checking eleven dice. What's yours? So I start with B five oratory. Uh, I automatically get three dice from my um, uh, prayer. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to fork in doctrine for quoting scripture. Mm -hmm. I would like to fork in etiquette for complimenting her hospitality. Mm -hmm. I would like to fork in suasion for talking about the end of the world. Mm -hmm. That brings me to seven. Uh, I would like to fork in... Um, uh, ugly truth. Um, because she knows that there can only be one leader. Um, she, she's led armies before. She knows that even though you have to, you know, even though you have a lot of different people, um, working towards one goal, there needs to be one person that leads. And that's the whole crux of my argument. Well, then if you get ugly truth, I get ugly truth. I mean, it's your call. The it's the because the uh, way no, I I I like the way you you just frame that, and I realize then, yeah, of course there can only be one, so it has to be me. Look around, like it should be obvious. So, but here's the thing, is. though: the ugly truth is in the eyes of the person you're trying to ugly truth, and there is no way that Aurelius would ever believe that it's the truth that she should be the chosen one. Okay, he has a chosen one. Uh, so you can veto it for me as well if you if she thinks that my argument is bullshit. No, uh, yes. no. Again, it's if the task That's does fine. not fit the intent, right? So. Um. All right, and then uh, did I do persuasion already? I did not uh, persuasion as well. So I'm going to throw fourteen dice here. Come on! Oh, actually, should I spend some Martha? Nah, I'm all set. She's spending a persona to add a die to it. Don't forget your ob is two instead of one here. Oh, shoot. I also get a bonus die from um, the obfuscate. So I'm going to be rolling uh, 15. Um. That's really bad. Fuck. So I lose six for my body of argument automatically. I'm going to reroll those sixes for sure. Oh, wow, I only have one six. Oh, yeah. No, so I lose. It's an, but it's, yeah, okay. Well, she, that's really good. She loses nine. Aurelius, she loses six. Yes. Boom. All right. She can incite me now. Yeah. I just want to make sure I do it right. Ooh, inside versus rebuttal. That is a that is a strong roll. Uh, you just get to make a stand. You just make the test like standard. Sam doesn't get to counter you. No, no. I if you fail, I still get to go. 
No, uh, no, if she no. Fails the insight. No, it's an, a, the in, insight inside... is a standard test against yeah. my will. If she fails to insight me, I still roll. No, um, your so it takes away my next action. Yeah, your next action, not this one. Rebuttal doesn't work against insight. Uh, insight is a is a workaround move against rebuttal. That's why rebuttal yeah, doesn't get right. a test against right. insight. You're right. So I so basically I I can force you into a steel test for this. Correct. So you're rolling against ob five will. Yep. She is rolling her insight against an obstacle of five. If she succeeds, then uh, Sam must pass uh, must pass a uh, a standard steel test. But she must use coarse persuasion, command, extortion. Well, she's going to use falsehood. She's going to yeah. use falsehood and say that. Of all of my conquests and all of my travels through the Nalor Marches and through the River Kingdoms, when I met Ronald Swan and I met you, I truly understood religion. Yeah, I have found religion because of you. <laughs> my whole life has been leading me to this moment. Look at the city that I've made. Look at the great people of this city. So good. Abadar has... has for whether observed or not, Avatar has plans for me. It's manipulative. Bless, bless this place is this place is consecrated by by our own will and testament against the horrors of nature. Make it official. And yeah. Huh? How many dice did she roll against me here? I wish I could have forked seduction, but I didn't see it. Um, she could so. have lied to me and told me how beautiful I am. It's too bad Aurelius doesn't <laughs> have any interest in women. You're a very <laughs> beautiful man. One might say you're glowing. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, okay, so... Falsehood. Persuasion. Patax wise. Um, Patax so, wise, she was talking about everything else other than Patax. Well, she was bringing up Patax, right? She, she was drawing Pitax. your attention to it. All right. These great people, this great city. It's I, I know what you're saying here, Sam. I get it. Yeah. In the future, I can draw attention to being like. These crimson banners are made from a thread that is not available anywhere else, but by this special alchemical process only known to a Pataxian out like Dyer, like Claviers, right? Like I can, sure. I will, I will go there if we have to. Um, I mean, it's there is also the understanding that if you forget and you want to argue that that's the thing she's saying, then we accept that because you're not the character. Yeah, we, we accept a, a like a slight level of leeway in terms of speaking the point. Not a lot, of course, because then you would just fork everything, but we understand. Hmm. I don't think she really used rhetoric. I was thinking whether or not I could use rhetoric, but no. Okay. So I'm rolling seven dice. Or eight dice. Eight dice. Against odd five. You have a good chance of, with, uh, of withstanding this. I do. Nope. Uh, I'll fate that, though. See if she got it in her. No, nope. Nope. fucking air classic air she dice strike a, again. She takes something bad, I think. Uh, so if insight fails, the margin of failure is added as advantage dice to my next test. Yeah. So two. So I get plus two. Man, cool. clear them out. Shall we take a break before we go into the second exchange? Yeah, let's take a break. We're definitely due for a break. So we'll see you guys on the other side. Um in six minutes.